What is good? We're back. Week four is just about in the books. We were recording while Monday Night Football is going on. So disclaimer, if anything happens to some of these guys, it's not my fault. We didn't know. (laughs) We're going to touch on a little bit of quarterly kind of rankings here. And I don't love to adjust my dynasty rankings quarterly per se, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of of what we're thinking about these guys right now. And I thought this was probably a good idea and a good way to kind of show what we're thinking of the movement just through four weeks of the season. So every four or five weeks, we're going to do kind of adjust the rankings a little bit and look at it. I I think you should probably wait a little bit longer to really make huge changes. Uh, But I think we've seen enough from some of these guys to feel pretty good about it. So we got Big Co over there uh, in the Brick Asylum. I'm remote as well. Usually we do Monday night in the studio, but circumstances, Big Co's got shingles. So, you know, we don't we don't want him around. No, don't, don't want to take this contagious mess over there to the studio in shambles over here, but just happy to be here talking fantasy football with you. Basically, really want to just, you know, hammer a couple of these guys who have, who have been very impressive and, and moved up the charts here. And that's really the biggest thing to take away from here is some of the biggest movers here. So I think tier one is just expanded. I think we've grown to having some really, really good receivers. And, and you know, the gap is maybe growing, maybe not so much between tier one and tier two, per se. And you could there's some guys in that tier three who can certainly be jumpers. But a lot of those other guys are, are, are seem to have distanced themselves, uh, or a lot of these top guys rather have seemed to have distanced themselves a little bit from the rest of the pack. And so, you know, a lot of those guys are, are the OGs, Justin Jefferson, which is crazy to call him an OG at this point. Right. Um, right. Jamar Chase, you know, you say what you want about him, but I think he stay there. And CD Lamb, obviously, those guys have been the guys in the top of this mix for a long time. I'm not moving any of those guys out. I, Jamar Chase shows showed you just this week how ridiculous he is on on one catch he could take you the distance. CD's been solid, uh, but I think we have some newcomers here, and they they were kind of right teetering on the edge coming in, but then one big jumper, and then I, I think St. Brown stays in this tier. There's no reason to move him. Had a bad week one, but had a great uh, two weeks prior sure. to this. Like I said, we're recording in, in Monday night of week four, so we're not sure what he's going to do tonight. But always solid and. You know, we talked about him in the offseason as being kind of the cheapest big time asset that you can buy that's still really young that can give you 20 points a week. But we have three guys, I think, that have really entered into this category Malik Neighbors, Nico Collins, and I'm dragging Marvin Harrison up here because he was already right at the threshold of coming into here. We just needed to see it. I've seen enough. I'm good. The, the hype was already crazy. Maybe you don't want him in here, but. Neighbors and Nico, it's warranted, right? At this point, because you don't you don't see any problem with that. I mean, if you could might could chop this tier up one time and you could say maybe Justin Jefferson's by himself or or really get right. specific on these things, but you know, I don't know that you would one for one trade neighbors for Justin Jefferson at this point. I, I would not. I would keep Justin Jefferson. That doesn't mean that they can't be in the same tier here. Give me your thoughts on on maybe is Nico the biggest stretch here? Is 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 it too early for neighbors, too early for Harrison? What are your thoughts? Well, obviously, I'm going to start with Nico. Uh, Nico's my guy. I've been, you know, all off season long, I've talked about how many times I was able to trade him and add him to different teams. We played four games, and he's got 100 more yards than the second guy, right? So he's got 489 yards, and Malik Neighbors has 386. As That's the top. That's one number one and number two, mm-hmm. right? You know, right there, just a couple touchdowns apiece. Just unbelievable production out of, out of Nico Collins, tied to a ridiculously good young quarterback, got paid stays there to me i don't think nico being up there is a stretch at all you know sleeper he came out the other day his pace for the year 127 catches 2078 yards and eight touchdowns you know and their question mark was top five wide receiver in football question mm-hmm. you know so that was the the stats that they put up and the commentary that they had with it so nico just like you said it's september it, you know obviously the last day of september but we get to hang our hat on that tonight saying hey guys it's just now it's september by the time right. anybody watches this, it will be October, but that's kind of how the, the calendar works. You know, like you said, Justin Jefferson, God mode, ridiculous. Uh, but like, I, it's not in this in this group of guys, Marvin Harrison Jr., Neighbors, and Nico jumping up into that top four that we had before the season started. I I like it. I don't have a problem with any of it. You know, Neighbors is everybody's favorite player right now because he's getting a hundred million targets. I think he's on pace for like two hundred twenty something targets for the year. Marvin Harrison. 
it just electric when he gets the ball and you know when he when he gets some targets he gets quality targets right now his quarterback's running around a little bit got ran into a little bit stiffer defense than he thought he was going to see against Washington yesterday and uh you know uh, it's Marvin Harrison like you said you know that was the highest ranked was she receiver before he played a game in the NFL in the history yes. of our game still scored points yesterday you know right Right. Marv still did his thing. Little little sleepy week one, and then been very rock solid after that. Let's talk about Malik Neighbors for a second. Um, obviously, you know the proof's in the pudding. He's good. There's no there's no doubt about it. He's excellent. He's an absolute stud. Uh, the target share is unsustainable at this point, right? I mean, for maybe sure. through the season. I'm not saying it's not sustainable for the season. He might see just yep. smash records for because it's just like this is what you got. This is what you're doing. You're a mediocre team. You're gonna. F- flush everything to him you're designing everything to get him the ball we'll get wandell involved a little bit underneath we'll we'll chuck it around to a few other people but we're just spamming neighbors and he's doing his thing with it we do need to caution of of getting over our skis of just crowning him as being the best in the league already right well i mean like you said the coach is trying to save his job by throwing it to neighbors the quarterback's trying to save his job by throwing it to neighbors and right now it's working the crowd erupts when he gets the ball in his hands, he's he's ridiculous. He's so much fun. He's he's twenty years old. So the arguments being made that he should be, you know, up there in the top of the dynasty wide receivers, we have him in the with great company up mm-hmm. here. C D Lamb, you know, yeah. Jamar Chase. Obviously, the the Bengals start slow. I, I between since Zach Taylor's got to Cincinnati, they're like one in 12, one in 13 in their first two weeks of the season mm-hmm. every year. For some reason, the Bengals cannot get out of their own way. Uh, this is the first offseason that Joe Burrow's been healthy in his freaking career outside of his rookie year. And then, you know, Jamar Chase wasn't there because he wanted a contract prematurely, mm-hmm. you know? So there's just that connectivity wasn't there for them. CD Lamb started a little bit dicey. He wasn't in camp until the last second, you know? Malik Neighbors, he's the flavor of the week. And that's when we started right before the season when we did our rankings. It was, you know, Malik Neighbors or this guy or Malik Neighbors or that guy for me because the, the, it was out of control already, you know. And so we didn't get very far down. And it was like you're taking – nobody's going to give you uh, their Malik Neighbors for Chris Olave or their Malik Neighbors Tyreek Hill, uh, Jalen Waddle. We played that game right before the season started on our wide receiver ranking show. And that's why I had, you know, Neighbors as high as I had him. And he's earned every bit of it now and, and more. I agree. Neighbors neighbors is doing his thing. I just want people to not be like when when it when it maybe does come back down to reality a little bit, which is still gonna be an awesome reality. What's wrong with neighbors? Nothing's wrong with neighbors. This is just crazy that what's happening right this second. You can't get two hundred and thirty five targets in a season. Like you yeah. know, so so like and, and maybe you can for one season, but like it, right. at some point it you know, the defense is gonna say, All right, well, let's triple cover this guy over here. And, and, and to Dayball's credit, like it is a ton of motion for neighbors. So it mm-hmm. is, he is making it easy. He's working like, it. Def- he's working it. He's working it hard. So right. to his credit, he's like, all right, well, I know the defense knows that I know that they know that I know I want to get him the ball. So he's working real, real hard to keep him in space and get him the ball. And Daniel Jones has delivered. So, but nobody could have predicted that it would have translated that, that, you know, the beat writers are telling us that he's the whole offense the preseason game showed us he's the whole offense and literally he's the whole offense. So <laughs> right. it just, we, we really wouldn't have believed that. Yeah. If we About- didn't see four games of it. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP and player pages. All for your pleasure. So would you rather have Nico Collins or Malik Neighbors moving forward? It's almost more impressive what Nico Collins is doing. Obviously, what set us up for Nico Collins is that you're tied to a really good quarterback and potentially a really good system. We don't know how long slow it will last, right? Nico Collins is one of my, it's become one of my favorite receivers in the league. And I still t- would have to take Neighbors over him if I just one for one. I'd have to take Neighbors for dynasty value. Mm-hmm. You know, if I if I had to go into one week and say, hey, I need to score 20 points this week to win the fantasy championship and they're playing a good team or what, you know, like I, I, I like I, said, I mean, Nico, four games, 489 yards, you know, 30 catches like 
just 100, 100 more yards, like you said. Surrounded by it. great studs everywhere. You know, like you said, you know, Malik Neighbors has five more catches than Collins. Collins has 100 more yards. Where's your productivity at? Mm-hmm. You know, so like if you're playing, uh, like obviously Malik Neighbors is playing with Daniel Jones on the Giants and you got CJ Stroud, statistically maybe the best rookie quarterback ever, like, and then coming in with a just a whole just ball of, of, franchise like uplifting new coach new coordinator new quarterback last year broke you know did things that nobody thought they could do like this nobody had more momentum coming in this year than this texans obviously right. tech you know chiefs win two super bowls but you know what i'm saying like sure, texans sure. texans were were everybody's darling and nico has done nothing but over deliver i still dynasty value i'd still take malik neighbors because he's five years younger but like what Nico's doing right now, he's doing it better than anybody in the league. Yeah. All right. So we got seven guys in tier one. Like I said, I think that's just kind of, I think that shows you kind of where we're at in the league. There's, there's some really awesome studs and I think they've separated. They're kind of good no matter what it seems. The youth in those studs is all, right. that's the fun part because sometimes, you know, a couple of years ago, you had two ty- two guys in tier one. <laughs> sometimes mm-hmm. you have two or three at the most, you know, we had four this year that, and then we had neighbors in St. Brown on the, uh, you know, right, right underneath it and, you know, couldn't crown them because they hadn't been on the field yet. And then those guys, I mean, not St. Brown, you know, Harrison and neighbors, I mean, and then Nico takes the jump with them. So we go from four to seven. I mean, yeah, like well, you said, and I, I think you're also seeing, you know, maybe a split from these guys who are, are doing these elite things because, you know, we're seeing all the numbers be depressed at the moment. And these are the guys that are really jumping out. So maybe that's why we're presuming that this tier gets bigger and these guys are young and studs and they're, they're doing their thing all the while. Like all the rest of these guys are, are not suffering, but like just everything being down there, these guys aren't dealing with any of that. The rest of the guys are kind of, you know, reaping the repercussions uh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's a good point. There's a couple more guys that we're going to talk about here who's actually like really producing right now, mm-hmm. game script independent, you know? And right. then after that, it is a it is just a log jam of, we know these guys are good and they're kind of doing this and they're kind of doing that. But like you said, that these guys at the top have separated themselves. There's a couple more dynasty studs right here underneath these guys. But uh, then after that, it just gets to a log jam. Yeah, so... And, and because it's, the defenses are crushing offenses for the most part right now. Right. Right. So tier one ends, tier two starts. I'm I'm leaving Puka in there, staying neutral. He's he's injured. I'm not I'm not demoting Puka here. Um yeah, I'm keeping AJ Brown in there, a little older, but we saw the damage he can do so fast, so quickly. He's just he's a monster, injured. So I'm I'm leaving him in there. I had him in there to begin with. Dropping Garrett Wilson out of this tier. Okay. No, that wasn't easy for you. No, no, I don't, I don't like it, but and we'll talk about it. And then I'm, I'm, I'm putting Rashi Rice in this tier, man. Like I, I almost had to make a case to put Rashi Rice in tier one, and and you know, I thought that this wasn't going to need to be a discussion. And then today I ran into a few buzz saws of Rashi Rice hate, and it's crazy to me. I, I, maybe I'm the crazy, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm the crazy person, but it seems wild to me that <laughs> anybody is is poo-pooing what this man has been doing. Yeah. Right? Well, I wouldn't have seen that coming either. Uh, you know, so the Rushy Rice hate, I don't think if he doesn't get hurt yesterday and he has another eight for 95 and a touchdown or, you know, something like that. Like, I don't think there's any hate. Like, what are you doing? He's you take it advantage three of yardage. He's going to be, he's a wider, he's wide receiver two or one. Like he's I, in the top. He would be in the top three of yardage. He's, he's still, he didn't. He got hurt without a catch yesterday. He still has more yards after cu- catch than any wide receiver in the league, and he's only played three games. Yeah. Okay, so like that's how nasty he's been after the catch. Obviously, you can say, "Well, Andy Reid schemed that up," but that's the whole point. Is Andy Reid schemed that up? Rasheed Rice grabs it, and you don't think Brian Dayball is scheming up na- just like we just talked about scheming up neighbors to get him open in those spots to have the target share that he's having. You don't think well, if exactly. they were just keeping well, you, him in one spot and doing what he did on the outside that they wouldn't just roll out like they're making it hard to cover him uh, on well, a guy the number, who's already good. That's absolutely. I mean, the numbers bear it out. He's got five more catches than, than Nico Collins and 100 le- less yards. But here we are with Rishi Rice. He's got more yak still than any receiver in the league. And he got hurt before he caught the ball yesterday. Mm-hmm. And he was number one on missed tackles force for wide receivers going into the game yesterday. Yeah. You know, he still may be number one. I don't have that stat in front of me, but he still yeah. may be number one in that. But that's how, yeah, that's how nasty he's been. 
And if you, if for anybody that has either a played against him in fantasy football in the first three weeks or B have him on their team, you don't want to play against him and you love having him on your team. So yeah. I'm all about, I'm all about where you have Rasheed Rice here. Obviously he just got hurt. Does he, right. is he's going to, is he's going to score any more points for you anytime soon? Absolutely not. But this is dynasty. Right. This is right. dynasty and he's young and he's on the chiefs. So all those right. things right there, dynasty, young chiefs stud. I'll take it. Right. So here's the point that I don't really understand is that you're going to be ups- like he came in as a rookie. Everyone was clamoring him for get more because the targets per route run and all these other metrics were pointing like, hey, this guy's a flashing indicator that you got to give him more run. Give him more run. He smashes the second half of the season. And then he comes yeah. right in and picks up right where he left off and was smashing through three games. Like, give me gimmick it up, bud. Gimmick it up. I don't give a shit what you're doing. It's working. Patrick Mahomes finds him. Andy Reid schemes him. Patrick... Kelsey's on the back nine here, Bo. No, nobody's out there going, "Hey, we're triple teaming Kelsey for this entire game anymore." I don't think. Oh, like, Kelsey's you know? chipping up on Kelsey's chipping on eighteen, Bo. He's chipping up on eighteen. Now he's probably going to do some PPR uh, damage here without Rasheed Rice right. and Hollywood Brown ain't coming back. You know, so like he's right. he's going to do some damage here. He's got a rookie wide receiver to compete with and Juju. You know, yeah. So like, and Pacheco's hurt. Like Kelsey's about to score some points PPR wise. Yeah. So like, so that I think Rashi almost that, made made the Kelsey thing that he he was. I think he was taking from Kelsey because he's been so good and they can scheme him so easily. Well, hundred percent. Like right now, I mean, the Chiefs are three and zero. Could easily be one and two, but like they don't need Kelsey to catch any passes right now. This this season right now ain't about right Kelsey. Now, but well, they yeah, in week five they might. Yeah. But in but you know like they they're all about getting to the playoffs as healthy as possible and they're down two guys already mm-hmm. you know three guys if you think Pacheco ain't coming back which he's probably going to be back for the playoffs at least they don't need to be out there giving Kelsey ten catches a game and they could probably be number one seed in the playoffs at this point without catch Kelsey getting ten points a game ten catches a game and they want him to help them win again like he did last year against the Ravens when the Ravens were an absolute buzz all. And they went in there and took it from him anyway. Yeah, I, I just I saw some trades go down with Rashi Rice today, and I saw some people talking about Rashi Rice, and I'm just Rashi Rice is on just my do not trade list. I'm not interested in trading away Rashi Rice. I'll trade for him. And you know, I was in a league chat with with somebody, and I don't I'll stay out of those usually, but you know, he he was citing all sorts of reason why he's a on Rashi Rice, and I'm like, man, I don't, I don't agree with any of this. This is crazy. Yeah. You know, and and I, I'm not saying that I de- there's no way I would trade Rashi Rice. But what to get what? What am I? Who who am I go- going to? That's any better than this? And and maybe in some of your advanced metrics, there's things you can point to that might that some other guys might do better. But Rashi Rice just goes out in the field and scores points. At some point, we got to throw all that shit in the trash. And it's not like he's not performing well in some of those. He is he just he's got a low A dot, and he's probably not good in a warp or s- some metric that people aren't liking. And I think a lot of this just stems from. People didn't like him to begin with, and they thought he was being gimmicky and schemed up in the beginning of his career there. And so that now that you that you you missed on him, you didn't like him, you can't correct now. So you just have stuck with this narrative, and it's I think it's nonsense at this point. Like, yeah. just give me you know, Rashi Rice. I'm good. Like that's a wide receiver one. He 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 has the ability to be the wide receiver one every week and just a top twelve wide receiver pretty much every single week. I want that guy. Right. Well, you know, I mean, I completely agree. I mean, he was only averaging 21 and a half points a game. That's not great. Right. And and on the way out the door, if his, if his a dots low and that bothers you, he's first in missed tackles forced and first in yak. So those two things go real well with low a dot. If you're going to be low yeah. a dot, you might as well be the best in those things. And he is, and he will still uh, get you over the top, man. He'll like, well, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I've heard, yeah. I mean, his whole college coming out his thing of he you know he's a big playmaker but if he can transform and be what the chiefs need him to be if he gets a low a dot and let's say Travis it's a, a dot wasn't good i could tell you that and he was the best thing in fantasy Nobody for cared. eight years he's a tight end he was the be- best thing in fantasy for eight let's say it's a, let's say he gets a seven yard air, air there's seven air yards on this pass mm-hmm. but when he turned when he catches it in stride and there's not a there's nobody within five more yards of him and now he's in, you know what I mean? Like that's mm-hmm. what's been happening. He's been catching the ball at six, seven, eight, ten 10 yards. And he's been cutting up field in stride in a ridiculously cool offense with Xavier worthy, taking the top off, which is exactly what they drafted him. Mm-hmm. Any negative hate towards Rasheed rice outside of he's hurt. And he's not going to help me for the next <laughs> three months. 
I, I don't. I'm, I'm, it feels like just no take lock at this point for some people. There's no which, need for it. You know, hey, I get it sometimes, but I mean, I just at this point, I you could throw everything out the window. I've seen it all. I've watched it all. He's he's freaking awesome. He's integrated into this offense. They love him. They know exactly what they're doing with him. I saw on Twitter today that Scott Connor was saying, you know, he would pretty much almost take any first for Rashi Rice, and I respect Scott Connor. And he he grinds his ass off. He he plays high stakes. He does his thing, but I think that is insanity to just be like any first and I'll trade Rashi Rice away. Like, how is he not worse two, if not, if he stayed what he was doing for two more weeks, he's going into the three first category for me. And so, you know, if he's scoring 21 points a game, like, right. I, I don't really throw, understand what, what we're doing. Yeah, I might have to throw some major conditions on that. I mean, unless it's like super flex and my team sucks and I'm going to have a really sure. good first, you know, top but four, like I'm not just, yeah, okay. I'm not just, I'm not just pump fist pumping myself and being like any first at all. Give it to like, it's like, you can't wait to trade them. Like that's not the way you play dynasty with a good player and a good team with a right. great, with best quarterback ever. You right. know, if you shipped him off to the Tennessee Titans, you know, maybe that's a different <laughs> sure. story. Right, if if right. Rasheed Rice is sitting over there with uh, with Tennessee and trying to figure things out, now give me any first and and you can have him. But he's not. He's with Patrick Mahomes and and right. and Andy Reid and and I'm and I'm hanging on to him. And like you said before we started, when we kind of brushed through some of this, apparently there's a buying opportunity for Rasheed Rice. Obviously, right. anytime anytime somebody gets hurt and are knocked out for the year, that means buying opportunity. But would a guy like this, who's literally just made his way into our tier two for dynasty rankings, which is, you know, a bit fluid at this point is September. Sure. It's fluid. It's September. But like you said, if he had, if he just played last night, you know, if he just played yesterday and hit would hit us up with another nine for 95 and a touch and then got his hurt, got his knee hurt at the end of the game. Like, I don't know. Wh- where's this hate coming from? Let's test the waters on our Rasheed Right. If you're, if you got that team and you just been kicking butt for a couple of years and your first round pick is basically that 111, 112, yeah. throw that thing out there for Rasheed Rice. Yeah. Let's go. Anything where I'm I'm in that, you know, top four in point scoring and I got a really good team and I got some depth and I've supposed to have my first for Rashi Rice right now. Uh, yeah. Because I, I, uh, I didn't think this was going to have to be a discussion. And then today I kind of ran into a bunch of different things that were like, holy shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sure, sure. The so, You know, the only caveat to that is if you throw, you know, just throw in your first round pick out is in the first quarter of the season. If you're, sure. you know, you're three and one or you're four and oh right now, you're crushing. You could have your own injuries. You're buying a guy who's hurt with your first. And then now all of a sudden you got uh, next week, you know, your two best players goes down just like Rasheed Rice just now did, and you don't have a first to recuperate, all of a sudden that first round pick, but you get Rasheed Rice, but you're playing with fire like that. I've, you know, just, I would rather stack up another potential, another way to do it or, Mm -hmm. you know, figure out, you know, the later you get into season, the harder it's going to be to buy them because you got more teams that aren't, you know, I've already figured out they're not winning and you're closer to quote unquote next year already. So maybe that's the case is you need to go ahead and do it now. But you know, it's kind of, every team is dependent, of course, but look into it. Definitely look into seeing how cheap Rashi Rice is today, because a lot cheaper than Casey and I thought he should be in some yeah, cases. I, I, I agree. I agree. So, all right, for me, that's the end of tier two. I'm not putting anybody else in there. Do you have anybody else that you would kind of throw in that area? Maybe if the Jets get on a hot streak, Garrett Wilson's right back in there, baby. Yeah. No. I mean, he's he's leading well, off tier th- tier three for me. Yeah. I, I'm. Yeah, I still love the talent. I still like the player. For Garrett Wilson to move down here, this is. It's the Jets. They haven't had a whole lot of time together. Uh, you're kind of spreading the ball around. Garrett Wilson is still leading in a bunch of these analytical numbers that, of target shares and all all these different check marks that you like to see for your high end receivers. It's just not coming home to fruition. And this last game was just a, a mess, just a nightmare. Yeah. So before we get away from tier two, I'll call a shot right now. By the t- because I know how people are about ages and you know wide receiver ages and dynasty. By the time we get when we do this in week sixteen, week seventeen, I think Brian Thomas and Roma Dunze will be up here on the back end of this tier two. But continue with your beginning of tier three, sir. Yeah. So Garrett Wilson down here, and I just I, I think it, it'll come eventually. We'll we'll have a great run with Garrett Wilson, and and we'll be excited about it. And if you want to keep him down here, that's fine. Um, I, I think the talent is through the roof. We're just not seeing it. And, and Hey, maybe that's take lock at this point for me as well. I'm willing to kind of slide him down a little bit. I think that with a guy like Rogers, he's not just going over there and force feeding 
Garrett Wilson. He, he's f- picking his spots and he's still getting a ton of the target share, but he's also trying to feed all this other stuff to make sense to get wins, right? Right. Um, well, this is this is the NFL. If Garrett Wilson was on the Chiefs today and stepped in next week into Rasheed Rice's shoes, do you think it would be a good looking football and Garrett Wilson would be a stud? Absolutely. You know, he's been on the Jets for a couple of years and he's looked quote unquote fantastic when his opportunity was there, but the ball couldn't get close enough to him for to catch it most of the time. And now, you know, three games in, you know, two th- last Thursday night, Garrett Wilson was a stud. Remember that? Mm-hmm. You know, the Jets crushed on Thursday night in perfect conditions at home and the crowd was there and they absolutely rolled up. I forget. It was the Patriots. They rolled the Patriots mm-hmm. up. And that's not an easy defense to roll up. The team as a whole might be yeah, easy to roll up. I mean, they were up. banged up. The, the Patriots, yeah. he's banged up. Yeah, you know, yeah so anyway, you know, up. so Garrett Wilson, every time he gets the ball in his hands, it looks good. For most part, every time the ball's in the air, it's close to him, he looks good. But the quarterback proof talk, if you don't get a if you don't get a target from Aaron Rodgers, you're not quarterback proof, but you're not, you know, it's, it's that yesterday against the Denver Broncos was a slobber knocker. That you can't do this every game, every weekend, week out, just bump guys up and down. That's just, mm-hmm. but it is a it is a day trading market sometimes in dynasty fantasy football. And this is what we have to deal with. But yeah. you know, you just lean back and say, All right, well, you know, if quote unquote Justin Jefferson was on the Jets, we think he would have had more points yesterday. You know, that's kind of how it works. Maybe, you know, I don't know if anybody <laughs> had very many points. You know, I just, it was just that kind of a game where they just weren't getting anything done. Like it was, it was gross. It was, is what it is. It's a blemish on the game. Garrett Wilson hasn't been terrible, but he hasn't been as good as those guys up above. And so, so he's down here. I think, I think it, it still can happen in, by week six when the, the Jets have figured things out and, and there's other guys on the team to worry about a little bit. And all basically Rodgers and Sala were like, hey, all the coverage is over on Garrett Wilson every single game. So I'm just not going to force feed it over there. We're trying to win. I'm going to take these yeah. easy matchups. And as he takes those easy matchups and things get easy and, and things you know, kind of have to relax a little bit of, hey, we need to guard some more of this field rather than just where Garrett Wilson is, I think we could see some different things, plus him and Rodgers get on a different page. Anyway, I have Roma Dunze in this tier. He stays neutral for me. Uh, was kind of in there. We saw in one game where he gets the targets, one of the best receivers in the league as a rookie, 111 yards on seven targets and a touchdown with a sprained MCL, right? Yeah. Uh, we kind of knew what this was. We kind of knew that there's going to be some ups and downs. You have Keenan Allen. Uh, you have DJ Moore. Caleb's starting to realize that Cole Komet is it an asset to him to keep these chains moving. They finally got Swift involved in the past game. So we kind of knew that, hey, it might not be – what Malik neighbors is going to get year one because he's all they got. Right. But you know, if Malik neighbors was in the same position, would his target share be where it is? Absolutely not. Uh, would it, maybe, yeah. maybe would he be doing a little bit different things than, than Roman Dunze is in, in Chicago? Maybe so we, we can't really say that, but I know I'm, I'm, I'm very confident in Rome. And, and the thing that you liked is him and Caleb can grow together as this thing goes. And the, uh, we're playing the long game and he went into a crowded situation. So I'm keeping Roma Dunze right here. Rome's played four games in the NFL, and one of them was seven for a hundred and something in a touch with a rookie quarterback trying to figure his self out. So that's all you need to know. I like Rome. Rome's arrow is pointing up. And we said it before the season that it was going to be a slow start for everything you just mentioned and look for a chance to buy last week's hundred, you know, two weeks ago, the hundred and a hundred and a touch did not help your buying chances. Uh, and this week, a little quieter. And, and that's all. And if you're trying to buy, you only can hope for him to be quiet for a few, you know, for his, a few more games, a game or two, yeah. you know, I think it goes up from here. They're trying to figure out who's on the field, when they're on the field and how it works. And they obviously went back to the run game this week. Rome yeah. Dunes, a firmly yeah. implanted in this tier three for me. For sure. I'm, I'm then I'm, I'm keeping Chris Olave in this tier. I think we've seen. You know, when they've had to play four quarters now with the Saints, you're seeing plenty of opportunity come with Chris Olave, and he was a yard away from scoring a touchdown this week and would have had an even bigger game. But he, he's been rock solid through pretty much every week outside of maybe week one. Uh, continue to see this growing. Obviously, Shahid's playing very well and is putting up similar numbers to him, but that's what they got. So that's what's happening. And they're, you know, they're learning a new offense and, and figuring things out. Uh, so I'm I'm keeping Chris Olave here. I don't have any worry with Chris Olave. I really like Chris Olave. And then a big mover for me, and I don't really know what to do with him. And maybe this is a little high, but I threw J- Jaden Reed in here. I'm I'm just oh. I'm think I'm done. You know, again, this can kind of go back to some of the Rashi Rice stuff of like, 
scheming them gadget this that whatever i don't really care at this point like and hey the the reason i had him on a sell list last year and was maybe had him lower and was like seventh round kind of pick he was a screaming by there should have bought him missed it um oh yeah but when he's on the field and doing what he's doing the the packers have a plan for him they want to get him the ball he's fun with the ball in his hands he's been great this year obviously they they didn't have love for a couple games here I just feel like, and we've talked about this before, like LaFleur comes from that Kyle Shanahan kind of area. This guy just reminds me of kind of the stuff that Debo does for the Niners, not in the Debo style of how he plays, but in the way they scheme with Debo and the different things they do and how he's the engine that kind of runs this team. Wix is good. Romeo's good. Christian Watson's good. They're all good. This is the guy on this team. And I, I think I'm just, I'm, I'm done with it. I don't care what the target share is. I don't care what this is. You can have something, uh, you know, go back to the mean or however the fuck you want to talk about it. I'm done with it. I, and I, I think Jaden <laughs> Reed is is that dude. And I, the Packers know it. And I'm, I'm just in. And and maybe in a week, in, in eight weeks from now, I'll have cooled. But I've just I've loved everything I've seen from him almost every single week, whether it's, you know, eight catches or three catches. I fuck he he's he could do damage on every play. Well, that's it. It does damage on every single play. I was out of town for two weeks. I was here after week one. I apologize for my offseason Jaden Reed just dumping water on his on him every chance I got. I'm a big I was I am a Christian Watson guy. Christian Watson still a stud. My thing about Christian Watson and, and versus Jaden Reed was whenever Christian Watson was healthy and Jaden Reed was on the field, he was sometimes not even on the field, much less getting targets. His target share was third or fourth in the pecking order. And I was hanging my hat on that because I like Christian Watson. And I think Romeo Dubs is a good enough receiver. And I know he's going to be on the field every play because that's his role in the offense. So it was gadgety for me. I, it wasn't that he wasn't awesome. It was just gadgety and it was touches and it was availability. I mean, it was like, you know, opportunity. And like you said, I mean, that four weeks in, obviously Christian Watson goes down early enough in that game. They're down 28 nothing. That represents a, a crap load of uh, attempts for the quarterback, which gives a lot of attempts, you know, targets for the wide receivers, et cetera, et cetera. But like every time he catches the ball, he's ridiculous. He's fun. I got Jaden Reed on zero teams. It feels <laughs> terrible. You know, I missed a good opportunity as well to pick him up in the seventh round and dynasty pick up dynasty drafts this year. I found a lot of good rational reasons why I didn't need to draft him in those areas, why I could go to this person person, or I'd rather have this person, or I'd rather just trade back and all these things that I could come up with to not have Jaden Reed on my teams. And I was wrong and it feels terrible. And he's, he's super fun. And I, I mean, I just, there's no real buy window here. You admit, you know, like I just, you just, if you want to overpay to get him because he's fun, I, I'm not going to tell you not to do it. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is where we got to kind of figure out, are we capping this tier off? Is Tyreek Hill in this tier? Uh, missing, I mean, he's not missing time, but his quarterback is, so it's hurting him. He's going to be 31 coming into the next season. Uh, is Devonta Smith or Drake London or Brian Thomas in this tier? I kind of had the, I kind of had a gap here and then Devonta Smith, Drake London, Brian Thomas and Tyree Kill kind of sitting off the side with DK maybe creeping up here a little bit. Uh, yeah, but I think what, the, what's your thoughts here? The hardest part is Tyreek Hill. I mean, we got Rasheed Rice in tier two. He's not going to play another game most likely for the rest of the year. But Tyreek Hill's 30 years old. He just lost his quarterback. His quarterback, you know, on IR may come back in, you know, four or five weeks and, and get him back. Tua led the league in passing yards last year, you know, is mm -hmm. for all the shade that we could, and he just got paid massively. And, and so for everything that we can come up with for Tua not being the most exciting this or the most exciting that or the most, you know, hey, the, Tyreek Hill and Tua make magic on the field. You know, Skylar Thompson and Tyreek Hill do not make magic on the field. Yeah. We got a different Stu quarterback. Huntley. We got, oh, I don't know what's going on tonight in that game. In the corner of my eye, I can see that they've had a field goal. Right. So I don't know what's going on with Tyreek Hill right this second. I don't know if, if Huntley can get him the ball, but that's the problem because he's the, you know, he's the best wide receiver in the group and he, he deserves to be up there, but he's 30 years old and we don't know what's going to happen now in this dynasty. Right. And Brian Thomas is the, is the sparkly new object that has getting more and more run every week and he's looking ridiculous. And, you know, and George Pickens is the best. Uh, most physically gifted player. He's probably not the best wide receiver, but he's the best pound for pound, like football player type, like, you know, ready to 
like just explode at any time he touches the ball kind of player left, but he's on a run first team with a quarterback whose best thing about him is not his throwing, you know? So mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. Fields has done really good getting into ball this year as far like consistently, like six for 60 has been his thing. Five for 55, like that's been pickings. And it, a, a handful of big plays and touchdowns called back for penalties. This week he fumbled the ball himself, you know, after a good play. Um, got a touchdown called back, of course. That's what Pickens does. That's what the Steelers have been doing with him. Mm. But like, but he got his touchdown. He's been crushing it. So, like, I mean, Pickens is ridiculous. And I think his the thing about it is just, there's just nothing there to change anytime soon. He's right. locked in on the Steelers and they just, they're, they're, th- they're three and one. They could easily be four. No, they were three, you know, they ran into, they, they were down 14, nothing early against the Colts, but like Pickens is not changing teams. He's not changing quarterbacks anytime soon, most likely. And I just, I, you know, he's seven for a hundred in a touch. Right. I mean, that's what, you know, he's, he's going to, did he get the touchdown seven for a hundred? I don't know if he got the touchdown. I think he did it's seven for a hundred. No touch seven for a hundred. I don't think so. Six for, anyway. six for 67, so five for 120 is on, on the docket any week. Mm. It's just whether or not it's just, you know, so I guess you could play that. I'm consistently getting 10 points a game, but I can get 20 anytime. And the, the guy is capable of getting 30 and should, he should be like an 18 point a game kind of guy, but he just doesn't have the surrounding. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to cap my tier two off at Chris Olave. Then I'm going to go Devonta tier three, Smith. Tier three. Tier three, sorry. And then I'm going to go Devonta Smith, Drake London, Brian Thomas. And I'm going DK Metcalf there. There um, it is. You know, I, I think these guys are are great players. Drake, I think, could easily be a mover here. Uh, I don't think we've seen the Atlanta offense really take flight just yet, and and but yet still getting a ton of target share. We're seeing this thing grow. They had a gauntlet of a schedule coming up or going through the first – three games to, to four games with New Orleans in division battle there. So I'm leaving Drake London there. Um, I, I think he could easily move up. And I'm, I'm throwing Brian Thomas in the mix up here. And I'm going DK Metcalf because I just I, I feel good about this situation moving forward offensively uh, for, for DK. And he, he's had big plays almost in every game so far. And I'm leaving George Pickens out of this tier for everything you just mentioned. I think he's just as good as all those guys. I just don't know what the where the future of, you know, the guy who can make his target share be really strong every week and be really consistent. I don't know where that's coming from and how it's going to be. Obviously, Fields made DJ Moore a ton of money, right? Uh, so yeah. it, it can happen. Maybe it's not fair to have George Pickens out of here, but I love it. And I love George Pickens, but I, I think just for everything that you said that I'm, I'm probably leaving him you know, a, a tier down there for me. And I'm going to throw Tyreek in this, in this thing just simply out of age, and, and there's some questions there. And then I'm going to go Brandon Ayuk. I'm going Michael Pittman. Easily could be up in another tier, but we're unsure of the quarterback play and how it's going to affect him uh, in the short term. And then I think Jalen Waddle is probably one of the biggest droppers, and I just have him and Hill in the same thing because I'm just we're really up in the air about what the hell is going on in Miami here for a minute. So for, for now, those guys, it's just like you said, you got to depress somebody. I'm depressing those guys, taking an easy way out. If a handful of guys are moving up, just the way math works, a handful of guys have to move down. If somebody's moving up, that means they went above somebody. And I think right now, just based on what with the conversation we're having, Jalen Waddle might be the easiest buy in Dynasty. He's he's that much younger than Tyreek, and he's just he's an absolute stud in a situation where he might not be able to get. You know, you trade for him, sure, put him in your flex or something, ride it out. But like in the like. There's no chance the Dolphins are coming in with this type of situation next year without another quarterback. Or I mean, they if if Tyreek if Tua comes back and continues playing, there's no chance that they won't have the best backup quarterback in the league next year. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. If so, if not, somebody needs to be fired. Yeah, you know, because we're 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 a we're a random smack of way from Tua going back out at any time. Right. So I, I like it. Um, and in, in reality, man, you could just take all those guys and mix them right there. You know, Pickens, Tyreek Hill, Brandon Ayuk, Pittman, and Jalen Waddle could be right there. They're, they really should be in the same tier with Devonta Smith, Drake London, Brian Thomas, DK Metcalf. They really should. Yeah, I mean, like I said, once we get down here, we're, we're going off of four weeks. We're basically just using this as an exercise. I'm not doing yep. anything super crazy, and none of this is yep. written in stone for me at this point. Yeah, um, Just time. kind of determining some values of, of what I like and who I like. Um, but I love the waddle call there. Um, 
Pitt, Pittman's hard to rank. I got a bad taste in my mouth for Mayuk right now, and he's not really producing to be a, expected a little bit at this point. But like to see you're getting paid like all those other dudes, but you're not producing like those other dudes at this point, uh, which is why I didn't really want him to get paid that much money because uh, I just didn't <laughs> think he was he was on yeah. that level of those guys. He's a good, very good player, but it's coming. Um, it's coming. I mean, I'm sure he's going to be going to be very solid um, through the rest of the season here for, for the Niners. And, and, you know, they're, they're working through some stuff too. Uh, yeah, I, fundamentally, absolutely. they seem to be doing some different things as well. Uh, just, yeah. and, and maybe we see that whole thing shift as we get closer to playoff time, but different sets, different formations, less yak, uh, maturation of Purdy uh, really coming right. to be just awesome. Uh, so, you know, the next, the next tier of guys. So this might only be 23, three i think but the next tier of guys is really big for me so i'm gonna leave it right there so so you, we always give you plus three more we're giving you minus one so love it well i appreciate you guys tuning in we mainly wanted to come in here and talk about these big big time movers the Jaden reeds the rashi rices the neighbors and that's what we were kind of using this show for uh like i said i'm not locked into any of these rankings super hard and firm they're going to be pretty fluid here uh and, and had a lot of fun kind of moving these around and it was a lot tougher than i thought it would be sure it always is. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment below. If you're listening to the podcast, five-star review. Uh, hit us up with a $5 holler on the Patreon side of things. You get an extra episode every Sunday. We recap games at 9 p.m. We go live for the patrons. You can hop on there, ask questions, or you can just listen to it on Monday. Uh, if you're looking for something else to listen to, we got a free Discord. We got all sorts of stuff going on over there. If you're listening and you got this long, you want to play on Underdog, promo code FFD, hit you up with some pickums. A lot of fun there. Be sure to check that out. And until next time, we'll see you later. Peace. Peace.